Hi, everybody. Welcome to the KPRC 2 Sports Podcast. I'm Sports Director Randy McElvoy on this late September week as we get you ready for a big sports weekend ahead. Great to have you with us as I uh, talk today, actually, uh, we're going to talk some Astros, and uh, here in a few minutes we're going to be joined, uh, part of my conversation with uh, one of the favorites when you look at Astros Nation with the fan base. Uh, they always enjoy Jeff Blum. Blummer has been a part of the uh, Astros TV broadcast for uh, many years now, former player. Uh, we're going to get to a conversation I actually had with him last night as they were leaving Tampa and uh, we're going to play quite a bit of that to today as part of this podcast because I think Blummer really brings in uh, some excellent insight. Former player at a very high level. He knows what he's been seeing out of this Astros club this season. But, uh, hey, it's been a fun year, right? I think everybody's ready for October. The AL West has been clinched. Uh, but, you know, they kind of checked that box and – Several years ago, I think that was a big deal, and it's still a nice accomplishment. There's no doubt about it. But the way the place that this franchise is right now, I think they've just set the bar so high. Um, it's like a lot of to say high school football teams or college football teams that are in a conference or a district. They'll say, "All right, district title, conference title." They almost expect it because they have bigger goals like national championship, state championship, whatever it might be. I think that's where the Astros are um, on this seven-year run. And I'll tell you what, what a year and what a run it's been uh, since 2015 when when they started to turn the corner when A.J. Hinch was here. But um, anyway, yeah, I think it's a huge accomplishment anytime you, you win a division, no doubt about that. And in this case, uh, they're going to get to 100 wins and probably top that. Uh, I don't know if they'll get to 107 to tie the franchise record, but they might. The way they're playing right now, they might. Um, but uh, it, it's been a fantastic season on all fronts, pitching, offense, Everything's kind of come together. The offense has been up and down, but pitching has been steady all season long. Uh, they've got – I mean, you just try to compare pitching staffs right now with other teams. I just don't think anybody's close right now. And uh, hopefully it will continue into October. That's the goal. You, you want them to be peaking right about now with – at the time of as we do this podcast, they've got about 13 games left, I believe. And uh, you just want to be peaking when it's all over in the regular season. And um, we're going to talk with Jeff about the break they're going to get to at the end of the season after they finish off the Philadelphia Philly series. They're going to get a five-day break. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to ask Jeff about it, and you're going to hear his take. That bothers me a little bit because this is a sport where you play just about every day. You, you have some obviously off days mixed in now and then, but you're never off more than two days in a row unless it's like a rain out after an off day or something. Um, so it kind of concerns me a little bit that you've got a five-day break, and if you're a team that's clicking on all cylinders like I think the Astros are, all of a sudden you got to make sure you don't lose that mojo, that edge. So I'm going to ask Jeff Blum about that. But the Astros, are they got to be the odds-on favorite right now. Definitely in the American League, they're going to get that top seed. National League, the Dodgers have it. But, man, I, I think that National League playoff postseason is going to be amazing to watch. Uh, the Braves, the Mets, uh, the Cardinals can surprise you. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. American League is going to be fun, too, because I don't think it's a given – that the Astros are going to get even through the ALDS. They, are they favored and heavily favored? Yes. But you just don't know in the postseason. And they're going to be facing a really good, uh, potentially, a Blue Jays team, maybe these same Tampa Bay Rays. Now you got a little edge because you just got through shutting them out for 23 of the 27 innings that you saw them. But, um, you know, Cleveland Guardians are playing really good baseball right now. You just don't know. In a best of five, you just got to make sure you're bringing it. So, anyway, uh, state of the Astros. Uh, again, I had a conversation with longtime Astros TV analyst Jeff Blum. We're going to play that right now. Enjoy the conversation and the great insight from the man they call Blummer. Check it out. Jeff, good to see you, man. Great to be on. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Randy. Hey, uh, well, let's dive into the, the Astros. The clinch is done now for the, uh, for the AL West. Uh, what are your initial takeaways from this club this season, the, the way they've been able to, to get the job done, not only on the mound, but the offense at times has been 
dominant as well, but the pitching has gotten the headlines. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. You know, a lot of question marks coming out of spring training. Is Justin Verlander going to get back to the way he was after Tommy John surgery? Is Lance McCullers going to make it back in time to be able to make the roster? And I tell you what, the way the p- pitching broke camp was absolutely incredible. They've leaned on him for the last six months, and they're actually getting better in the month of September, which is absolutely remarkable. So JB is in contention for a Cy Young Award, should win it in my eyes. And, of course, Lance McCullers, who we just saw pitch tonight, did a phenomenal job getting over 100 pitches, so he is healthy, he is strong, his pitches look great, and the Astro pitching is really setting the tone and allowing that offense enough time to go out there and prove that they've got the thunder. Hey, Jeff, looking ahead to October, now that the the AL West is in the books, or they're getting that number one seed hopefully as well, and uh, right now when you look at this club and the decisions they're going to have to make when it comes to a playoff roster, specifically on the pitching staff, What's it look like to you? Because there's going to be some tough decisions to make here. It's going to be really tough. And, you know, getting Hunter Brown up here, watching Seth Martinez go, who had a 2.0 nothing ERA was a tough decision. And now you see Hunter Brown and what his ability is. And you hear James Click talk about the potential of putting him in the bullpen for an inning, if not more. That creates all kinds of depth. You're going to have to move a couple of guys out of your rotation as you get in there. But there, you know, there's a lot to like about Hunter Brown with the high velocity, power slider, curveball. He can go out there and has wipeout stuff. So he's probably going to make the decisions even tougher for Josh Miller, the pitching coach for the Astros, and Dusty Baker. Those conversations are going to be lengthy. They're going to be hard, but there are going to be some tough decisions. The ultimate thing, though, is is they're going to be great decisions because no matter who they pick, those guys are locked down. Who's been the biggest surprise to you with all the great pitching performances we've seen all year uh, from the staff in this rotation? Who stands out to you the most with what they've been able to accomplish? That, that, that's a really hard question because I don't know how long this show is going to run, but you could say Fraber Valdez with the consecutive quality starts. You could say Justin Verlander coming back from Tommy John. Yeah. You could say Lance McCullers coming back and getting into shape. But Hunter Brown, it was a, a beautiful surprise. Was his stuff going to translate from the Space Cowboys to the Astros? It has. I would have to say I'd pick two guys right now, to be honest with you, because Presley's doing what we expect him to do. But Rafael Montero, we still had some question marks on him and his health and what could he do if healthy. Mm-hmm. He looks phenomenal. And Hector Neris, one of the feel-good stories out of that bullpen, having never pitched in the postseason, right. has come out and really filled a, a really big role in that bullpen. And, oh, by the way, Ryan Stanek has a one ERA. Yeah, it's just uh, you go up and down the, the list here. It's just been an incredible year uh, by the Astros pitchers. I want to ask a follow-up on Framber Valdez, uh, Jeff. You, you've seen him develop since he first came up. What's been the key for him this year to, to get to the level? All these quality starts he's turning in, uh, the record's unbelievable. How has he elevated his game? Well, Early on when we first saw Fromber, it was great stuff, just couldn't command the zone. Now we're seeing Fromber Valdez, who is one of the strongest, physically one of the strongest pitchers in all of the big leagues, and now you're seeing the command come with the stuff. Now he's got stuff in the zone that he's able to get ahead with and then get to that wipeout curveball. So I think it's really the command and control for Fromber Valdez and also the poise, too. Even when he gets in a little bit of trouble with traffic out there, he understands that he has the ground ball percentage that can go get him a double play with the defense behind him, and he also has the ability to go out there and get that swing and miss that gets him out of trouble. But the consistency on the command for me with Fromber Valdez really proves that his stuff plays at this level and that much better when he's in his home. Is it? Do you think this is the best year for Verlander that he's had in his career? I mean, he's had so many great ones, but where does this one stack up? I mean, for Verlander at the age of 39. Well, isn't is it amazing to know that he's already, you know, he's won a couple of Cy Youngs, he's got the no-hitters, but he yeah. was an MVP Cy Young in 2011, and if you compare the numbers, he is better now at 39 than he was in that 2011 season. The guy is remarkable. Everybody says he's a machine. He's a freak. I mean, you can pick the word. The only thing I think about when he's out there is just pure dominance and will and desire to go out there and just and just dominate games. He has been an absolute pleasure to watch, and what a luxury to have him at the top of your rotation. All right, we get to the lineup now. These guys are seasoned. They're 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 battle tested. They're they're ready for postseason play. Uh, I want to ask you about a couple of guys and just your what comes to mind when I mention their names. Let's begin with Kyle Tucker and the year he's had. 
Kyle Tucker, he, he's the man and probably one of the most unsung guys or un, not spoken about players in all of baseball. I know that last year he got some MVP votes with what he was able to do, but he's really one of those guys that you just start flipping the page and you start to look at the Astros stats and you go, oh man, Altuve, Bregman, uh, right. Alvarez, Gurriel, and you're like, wait a minute, Tucker has 100 plus RBIs in this lineup. This guy's doing right. some serious damage and he's stealing 20 back. So he's a proven 2020 guy. He plays an incredible defense out there in right field Kyle Tucker he is a main cog in this lineup and he's an absolute weapon we saw it today with the home run off of left-handed pitcher Brooks Raley that it doesn't matter what side of the mound you're throwing from if you're right-handed left-handed he's going to go out there and put together an at-bat that's really going to frustrate some uh some pitchers in the postseason mm -hmm. and uh, not to mention 100 plus RBIs tells you that he is absolutely clutch when they need him yeah he is dangerous uh, in the box for sure second name Jordan Alvarez uh <laughs> Man, I tell you what, he's just fun to watch. He, he's, is he one of those guys that, if you're a baseball fan in general, when you hear that, hey, Jordan's at the plate, you almost stop what you're doing to find out what, what, what the result's going to be, right? No, I completely agree. You and I have been able to watch him for a couple of years now, so we have yeah. that understanding. But I think it's starting to become league-wide where, you know, the Mike Trouts, the Aaron Judges, the Shohei Otanis, and then everybody says, if you're, you know, if this guy's on TV, are you going to stop and watch? And Jordan Alvarez is yeah. now that guy. He is definitely must-see TV because of the potential of just going out there and hitting a thunderous bomb. Shoot. That, lab, that game he had in uh, Minute Maid Park where he hit three home runs of 430 feet mm. plus, that's Amazing. what we show up for. It's almost as if he's taking batting practice against <laughs> professional pitchers, which is something that you don't see on a regular basis. But you know the way that that guy swings it and the potential for the amount of damage he's able to create is an absolute, you know, just a joy to watch. Yeah, healthy Jordan Alvarez is a good thing. A couple more questions uh, with you, Jeff. Uh, the job Dusty Baker has done, second year now since he's been the manager uh, of the Astros, that uh, this team has won over 100 games. You look at his managerial career, he's gotten the job done everywhere. Uh, what has he meant uh, for this franchise and for this, this club in particular this season? Yeah, I, th I think what Dusty brings to the to the game is uh, probably showing up a little more this year than we've seen in years past. You know, in years past, he's kind of been on damage control yeah. with some of the stuff that happened in 2020. You know, he's you think about the legacy, you think about the experience and how long he's been in this game. It's remarkable what he's been through as a player now as a manager and all the experience that he's accrued and it's really started to show itself here with this ball club motivating them encouraging them and you know telling them not to just play 130 games we're going to play 162 strong and he's really taught the Altuve's the Bregman's the Tuckers and some of these mainstays in that lineup taught them how to be horses in this lineup he puts them out there and he expects them to play hard every day and I think that's how he played as a player too so it's a lot of fun to see that influence turn from kind of a calming voice to a motivator here in 2022 and hopefully mm -hmm. you know it's amazing to think that he's this will just be his second year of getting 100 plus wins as a manager you think he'd do that a little more frequently as some of the ball clubs he's had but this might be a special year for Dusty and that's what we all hope for well he's looking for that first World Series championship uh, for sure final question Jeff uh, so they're they're on to the ALDS they know that they're going to end the season a lot of people are, are concerned. You're seeing it on social media like, all right, what are they going to do with a five-day gap suddenly, which they haven't had at all during the season? As a former player, how do you, how do you deal with that? How can this team stay sharp during that five days? They're going to have to wait until that ALDS begins. Yeah, it, it's tough, you know, in a, in a in a sport where you're playing every single day throughout the course of the season, then you get a five-day gap and you try and fill that time, the hardest thing is to maintain that tiny timing, maintain that rhythm, and keep these guys fresh. I know that the time off will really benefit them as far as health. Yep. It'll help those guys get their legs back under them, get that strength back, and kind of create that second season feel where you get excited and you start to get invigorated. But I know that they're going to be creative. I know Justin may pitch that second to last game of the season, so it'll kind of keep the spacing between starts a little more consistent for him. But at the same time, a lot of guys out of the bullpen are used to pitching back-to-back -back days. How do you keep them fresh? Yep. In my experience, you know, with in 2005, we had a seven-day layoff, and we actually just faced our own team. We basically played inner squads at, at live speed, trying to keep that feeling and that rhythm alive. So I'm sure they've got a pretty good plan, but these guys are – highly trained professionals who are mm -hmm. stalking the postseason. I'm sure they'll find a way to make sure that they're ready. All right. We cannot wait till the postseason arrives. Still a little bit of the regular season left. Blubber, always great to talk Astros baseball with you. We look forward to much more as we hit October of the playoff run. Man, it's going to be a lot of fun. Appreciate the time tonight. 
No, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Randy. Thank you. All right, great conversation there with TV analyst for the Houston Astros, Jeff Blum. Always enjoy Blummer. Uh, he's uh, frequently guest on uh, Sports Sunday. He's our, been our postseason analyst for the last uh, couple of years as well. We look forward to hopefully having him on uh, coming up in October as well. So appreciate uh, Blummer for taking the time to chat a little baseball because that's the hot topic right now in H-Town. And I wanted to incorporate my conversation with Blummer as part of this podcast uh, for this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. And again, a reminder, we do this each and every week here on KPRC2+. Plus. Click to Houston.com, our KPRC2 sports podcast. We're working on an official name, by the way, for it, because we are going to come up with some kind of name. We're not quite there yet. But anyway, thanks for listening. And in your case, you might be watching as well. Appreciate the time. So long for now. We'll do it again next week. Either myself, Ari Alexander, or Chancellor Johnson will be bringing you the podcast each and every week. Have a great weekend, everybody.